so Grimsby review time. Uh, I, I was a bit lost for words. It was so good, uh, to be honest, in the end. Um, so uh, before I get your thoughts, I'll just share the, 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 the facts uh, of, uh, of, of the day, I guess. So obviously we ended up winning the game three zip. Uh, Ollie Palmer got a goal, Will Boyle got a goal, and Elliot Lee got another goal. Um, all of which we're going to break down in glorious technical shortly. Um, according to uh, FopMob, which is the uh, the app I use here, they gave Elliot Lee the man of the match. Uh, always subjective that lots of people have different opinions, um, but we'll we'll start by just going over the lineup. So Howard was in goal, Barnett, Hayden, Toza, Boyle, and McLean all started at the back. Uh, O'Connor, Young and Lee started in midfield Palmer and then Mullin came in up front um, so pre-match the buzz was all around the Mullin start um, because I don't I don't think anybody really thought he would start I think everybody was hoping he'd be on the bench again um, but uh, Michael shaking his head like oh, no I knew he was going to start it was obvious he no, not at all. <laughs> Um, but it was interesting, actually, just before the team was announced, I was talking to Richie, who, who uh, when he gets time, does the podcast with us, uh, did more last season. And he'd said that uh, I think one of his friends had, uh, had spoken to Parky and he kind of had said the plan was get that first sort of big substitute appearance in and then Mulls would play. Um, and ironically, there we he was right because Mulls obviously started. So. Pre-match, Jamal, you saw the uh, you saw the team news. What were your thoughts? Were you happy with it generally? Anybody you'd have swapped out? Or was it what you were expecting? Um, no, so the midfield is what I've been hoping for for the longest time. I really like that midfield. I think yeah. it's, it's it's much needed um, with uh, O'Connor, you know, kind of laying, laying in the back and let Elliot Lee run freely up, up in the offensive side of things. So I really like that midfield. Um, I love to see McLean starting. I, yeah. I mentioned it, I think on one of the spaces, I thought, uh, I thought it was going to be tough substituting Mendy, but yeah. McLean is just, that guy's level a above, whole different level above. Yeah. 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 So, um, I really enjoyed the lineup. My thing, uh, was the Mullen start. Uh, I had tweeted, um, was it too soon? He looked yeah. gas, and I didn't take into account how hot it was that game, uh, the Grimsley or was it? Grimsby that he came in as a, no 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 I'm sorry the game before, I know the one you mean yeah it was roasted off that first uh, that first sub yeah. appearance game so I was just a little concerned that they rushed him in there um, especially after the Armstrong thing didn't go through I was like are are they just looking for a reason to get fans excited or or was it too soon because he just looked gassed it wasn't I've never seen Mullen like that um, but you know he made me eat crow he looked like he was back into physical form I think now he just needs to get the touches back and get yeah. his feeling back. But no, everything everything was great. I'm glad that Hayden was okay. I'm glad that he was in the starting lineup. Yeah. Um, I've made the prediction. I think we're going to lead the league and set peace goals with Hayden and Boyle back there. Yeah. Um, to add Palmer up top. So um, no, I really enjoy that lineup. I think that's going to be the the basic like starting a lineup going into the future. Okay. Um, there's someone that I'm missing. Oh well, now with Fletcher, I don't know how that's going to work. But I, I, I personally really like that lineup, and having Fletcher as a super sub works for me. So, Mike, what, what were your, what were your thoughts? Nothing to add. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's not, that's tomorrow's the a professional. No, um, yeah. I mean, it, it's I. I the, the 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 only thing I'll say, and, and Jamal touched on Fletcher. That 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 partnership that we've seen in two games now, the, the yeah. Doncaster match and the Grimsby match with Fletcher and Lee is gonna be a lot of fun to watch yeah. um moving forward. They're both just they're 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 way too good for League Two. Um, you know, Fletcher, I mean, obviously played in the Prem, Prem experience, Lee's played in leagues above. Um, but but that little partnership, just being able to the the small little those little nuanced things in the game that they just read and see so well with having I mean, just zero verbal communication. It's just spatial awareness. It's awareness of um, you know where their help is, where defenders are, you know how to carry a man off, when to carry a man off, when to back, when to switch. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of fun to watch moving forward. Those two guys uh, obviously feed off each other very very well. Uh- you obviously you watched it at home. I'm sure we are at home, or where we what? Where did you both watch it? I was at home. At home, yeah. 
had it so, had the link up on the TV. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what the, the the interesting. I mean, Fletcher came on for that whatever it was. Uh, so twenty odd, twenty ish minutes. Um, okay. That cameo nearly scored twice. Uh, a header from a corner and the overhead kick, um, which was uh, you know that was a real touch of class. And I mean, I there was the people around me were sort of saying, you know, I think this fella might start when he gets fit. Um, I think that's going to be an interesting talking point in yeah. two, three, four weeks' time when he is up to speed a bit more. Um, does anybody think that's a crazy shout and he's always going to be a sub, or do you think there is a chance that he's got such he has got the class that you know once he's sub to speed he might get a start alongside Mulls? Yeah, I, I said last week, I think on here or maybe in a space that it would not surprise me one bit, um, you know, with the, with the quality that he has to see him. Um, I don't know if he's going to be, you know, the permanent strike partner with Bowles because obviously uh, Mullen and Palmer play off each other so well. Yeah. Um, that experience um, of multiple seasons together now. But, um, you know, Palmer gets a little niggle, a little injury here and there. Wouldn't surprise me one bit uh, to to see Fletcher come straight in. Um, and then if he just you know needs a blow, um, yeah. needs a needs a rest, then um, it, it would not surprise me at all to see Fletcher start um, a, a good number of games throughout the season. What do you think, Jamal? Was he? Do, do you agree? Yeah, I mean to answer your question, no, it wouldn't surprise me. Would I want that? No, I'd like the idea of having Fletcher as a super sub. Okay. Um, especially with his experience towards late, let's say we're losing. I feel like you need that, that mature that's, yeah, midfielder. Yeah. yeah. That's been there, knows how to calm everyone down. Um, so I, I mean, no, not trying to take anything away from Tozer. I think he did a great job of doing that, but coming from Fletcher, it's totally different. So I, I personally like the idea of him, having him as a super sub, but I would not surprise me one bit the way he's been playing. Just on Tozer. There's a very, there's a brilliant clip You'll uh, you'll see of uh, Toza giving Mullin a bollocking during the Notts County game for not cutting a ball back uh, in the documentary. It's really interesting, you know, when you think about how such high esteem we hold Mullin, and yet he was, you know, Toza um, was very clearly saying, you know, we can't waste chances in these games. Is basically what he's saying, you know. Uh, and Mulls argues that he couldn't see uh, the pass that that everybody thought he could play. So uh, it's a brilliant little. I, it's it's a matter of seconds, isn't it, Jamal? But it's it's, it's just really seconds. interesting to see the dynamic uh, of Toza. Not you know, it's you know, not sort of uh, well doing his role as a captain. Really is what is how yeah. I would describe it. Yeah. Um, despite that how was, high uh... we think of uh, of Mulls. Yeah, that was my favorite clip of, of the whole episode because you, you see the slide of Tozer and and I've said it before, I think, especially when we're in the National League, you had to have a special sort of captain, someone who would really hold the anchor down because you're dealing with these high profiles and like Palmer and Mullen. And so it was great to see that he's not one to shy away. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Okay, so should we have a look at the goals? <laughs> Let's... Uh... Uh, for, uh, for people who do listen to the audio podcast, is uh, what I learned last week was this is just a nightmare. It's just us talking and not being able to reference things. But um, <laughs> uh, I apologise. Um, so, uh, just let me know if that is that f uh, full screen for you guys or what? Uh, yeah, it is. It is. So. Uh, I've just pulled out the goal so that we uh, we don't uh, keep Mr. Elon Musk too too long today. Uh, <laughs> so uh, first goal, so uh, brilliant. Oh, I better I better turn that down so that Mark Griffiths doesn't uh, try and or the club don't try and break copyright or anything. <laughs> uh, hey, they do weird, they do weird things nowadays. Um, so corner by McLean, great, great. That's the first thing. Right? If that was Elliot yeah. Lee, that hasn't beat the first man. Yeah. So yeah. dare I say it? Um, but uh, so the first thing is the great quality of corner is is what uh, is what leads to this. Um, nice, Long keeps it alive. Uh, now they were claiming offside. I think I've paused yeah. that at a good sign. Yeah. I, I know no, it's a bit blurry, but you can see yeah. he's clearly onside. Now, do onside. you know why he's onside, though? <clears throat> um, does anybody know why he's onside? 
So do you see our mate here? Defender closest to the box, yeah. Yeah, so no, you see this? I think he's a blonde-haired defender. That Can you uh -huh. see my mouse that I'm circling? Yeah. Right. So he decided to have a bit of a cheat, and it's, back, it's backfired on him. So uh -huh. uh, if we just go back, I've gone a bit too far. But you watch the corner initially when the keeper punches. He goes, he goes down. He's gone down. He's, can mm. you just about see him? He's I over do. here. He's gone down. I trying didn't to catch that on the stream. Yeah, he's, That's good. Trying to win a, he's trying to win a foul. Yeah, he's trying to say yeah, I've yeah, been yeah. fouled. Uh, he probably hasn't. He's just barged into somebody. Yeah, That's. Uh, I, I can't see the quite who's, the, who's. I can't quite see who's there. But just if you watch him, can you see him? He's still on the floor there. Mm -hmm. And he's late coming out. So there's the ball. There's our man. I think that's Boyle next to him. Boyle might be close to being offside. It's hard to tell from this angle, but Palmer clearly isn't, is he? But what makes he it is, is the ball from Lee. It's it's what I call a clipped yeah. pass. It's just yeah. it's it's. But what they will say, what Grimsby will argue. Am I boring you? Here? This is is this too much talking? Uh, this right. is great. Grimsby will argue. See this fella here by the ref. He's taken way too long to put pressure on Lee. Yeah. So he's got all. You've got one of the best midfielders in the league who's got all the time in the world. Absolutely. To find a Wrexham player, and if you actually have a look in the box, I think it's Boyle, Palmer, Tozer, might be Tozer, and Hayden is also. If you look at Hayden's body, he's going as well. He's yeah. about to go for it. They've got all the look. You know, all the time in the world. Um, so it starts oh, from the great corner. Yeah. The ball by Lee was. I think is sublime, um, and the pass is just is, is super. But it, it's you know that fella is cheating. You know that's what happens, unfortunately. Um, that's a good call, man. I didn't see that on the stream. I didn't see it on the highlights either. Yeah, that's a good so call. Um, yeah. just a little, just a, a little thing uh, common now for players, obviously, to jump jump around. Yeah. So that was good for for Ollie because he needs some goals, doesn't he? I think he needs some yeah. goals so that we can see the old marauding Ollie. Let's get some confidence in him. And, uh, you know, that's great for him. Uh, and his celebration is, well, I won't go into the celebration. I'm not quite sure. What he, I don't know if you saw it. Not quite sure, not quite sure what was going on with the celebration. Yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, anybody else got anything to say about that first goal? We enjoyed, I hope we, we enjoyed that one. I don't want to do all the talking. So if you've seen something, tell me, because I don't want to be just me yapping, talking rubbish. No, no, yeah, yeah, that's, to your a, point. that's a good call. I thought the same thing, uh, I, I didn't see the guy go down, so good eye on that. But uh, I remember watching the game thinking, like, how are you that far apart from Lee? And yeah, yeah, he yeah, took yeah. forever. And you could see even even before Lee gets his foot on the ball, he gave up rushing Lee. Like, he was already positioned to block himself. Just trying to block himself. it instead. Yeah, yes. and it's that's mistake. That's the first mistake. When you have someone like Lee with that quality of touch, Correct. you get on him like a mosquito. Impressive. You don't you do not give someone that much time. You'll hear it. When you watch games, uh, hopefully you can hear it on the telly. When the opposition are, are around our, at the edge of our box, you'll hear everybody sort of like complaining. They're all going like, come on, get out, get out, and press him. And that's why, because it's just one pass or one shot. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, uh, that can be the difference between a game. Uh so the Will Boyle goal. So the Will Boyle goal comes from this starts from obviously from a toes a toes. So set pieces. Uh, I don't know. Do we call a, a long throw a set piece? I would argue that it is. Um, yeah. With toes are to, throwing, it is going back yeah. to your thing yeah. before Thank Jamal. You. So great leap by Hayden. Uh, so obviously that's going to be the target all the time, isn't it? If Hayden's playing, he's the target. Um, so at this point, I've just. I've stopped it here. So at this point, this looks like this guy here is just going to launch it, isn't he? That's what it yeah. looks like. I'm just, I'm just going to put my foot through this and absolutely yeah. launch it, right? Send it to the moon. But he doesn't. And there's the key to this. So our attacking midfielder has just gone uh, and just got a little nick on it, yeah? Just gets a little nick. Elliot Lee just keeps the ball alive, as we call it, yeah? See that? Keeps yep. it alive. And then the, the move breaks down because they're not comfortable enough in possession and then step forward mr mclean who is now winning accolades left right and center isn't he after uh, uh appearances on talk shows in ireland i don't know if you saw that uh, yes. which was great because he sort of it was he said that now he he knows he's on the autistic spectrum um so he's getting a bit of understanding towards that as well so this is great so the key to this uh, for me um and pl please feel free to say something 
Uh, McLean's taken a touch. That is the key to this goal. To Does anybody know what I mean by that? So the fact is that if that's any of our other uh, left backs, they're taking another touch there to set themselves. Mm. Right? But he doesn't. He hits it first time. Yeah. Look. Now, here's yeah. our goal scorer, Will Boyle, in here. The Grimsby manager, Paul Hurst, will be, he'll be so angry. Look at this. Untouched. He's probably, it's hard to see what's going on on the right-hand side, but I'm going to give this guy uh, the benefit of the doubt and saying he's got Hayden. Then you've got one, two, three players within, what are they, six yards? Yeah, just as a guess. It's just yeah. a guess. Maybe not, five yards. Like you say, Jamal, to he's totally free, isn't he? Um, mm. And so the ball's on its way. Oh, he'll be so angry. And Boyle must be thinking, I can't believe his luck. You've got a six-foot-four yeah. centre-half who's got a ball being pinged at his head. But the key to this is he actually, the ball from uh, McLean is actually ever so slightly behind Boyle. So he has to do some work to get, his, to, to, to get around it and head it back. It's a wonderful header when you watch it. Uh, he just gets a head. See how he has to go back? Yeah. yeah. What a header that is. But, and Boyle will tell you, it's all about the ball. The ball is so good. It's first yeah. time. It's early. It's totally caught them out. Um, yeah. And it's a wonderful header. Um, if he did not, if he didn't place it, looking at this, and I don't know if y'all are getting in slow motion because of the connection, but if he didn't place it that way, though, would the Grimsey uh, defender had a chance at that? In what way? What do you mean? Which Which bit? If the ball was a little bit forward, it looks like the Grim the Grimsby uh the Grimsby defender was uh would have gotten a hit on that on the other angle. You mean ahead of ahead of Boyle? Mm -hmm. Uh I, let's have a look. You might be right. Let's have a look, see if we see anything. I think I understand Looking at what it you're now, saying. I'd, the fact I'd that he did that have to perfect. stoop for it, it possibly helps him. Maybe. If that ball comes here, it's it's definitely contested way more. Than it is because it's ever so slightly behind him. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know he's definitely going to be closer to it, but it's. I mean the keeper doesn't even die for it. It's it's so good. But look, McLean yeah, harasses yeah. him. But that ball to hit that ball first time is yeah. top draw. Yeah, that's what makes it, and that's that's the little bit of class that you pay that extra bit of money for is what Phil Parkinson will tell you. Um, so I really enjoyed that goal because I was com I was confident at that point. I don't know how you were feeling when you saw it at home. But at that point, I was a bit more like, oh, I think, you know, um, I think we might be all right here. What were, you, what were your thoughts? One thing about this Wrexham team, and it's going to kill me saying this, being a huge Liverpool fan, okay, they remind course. me a lot of the Sir Alex Ferguson teams yeah. where they'll make you pay for your mistakes. Yeah. And we've seen that with these first two goals. Those goals were as a result of Grimsby's mistakes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there you think that you should play the ball out a bit better, shouldn't you? You should be a bit better. Um, yeah. So yeah, you you know you've got to you've got to take the got to take your chances. Um, but two good goals, um, and then the third one. Um, so obviously this is uh, a bit later on. Share that again. Sorry, I was uh, bringing, no, us all back, bringing us all back in. Um, Elliot Lee. So Howard, nice long ball. So <clears throat> here's Fletcher. And anybody who knows Stephen Fletcher, Fletcher, this is Fletcher up against their best centre half. And anybody who knows Fletcher knows that, you know, he is an animal in the air. So he wins the flick. Yeah. Um, which obviously a lot of people, you might not get this, but a lot of people criticise Ollie Palmer a lot because he doesn't win those balls. He'll look for fouls instead. Yep. So if you watch, when you're watching, if there's a ball like that and Palmer sort of tries to win it or he'll go down a bit and he'll look for a foul, nine times out of ten he's having his shirt ripped off him. Um, yeah. But you'll hear a bit of discontent because fans are thinking, oh, please be a bit stronger. You're a big lad. Be stronger. Win the header. Um, so he wins the header. Dolby does some good work. And then again, look, this is the key point again here. It's going off what you're saying, Jamal. Um <clears throat> So you've got two Grimsby players and two Wrexham players uh, going for the same ball now. Uh, so this becomes a case of who wants it most. Uh, and I thought Fletcher was going to come on to this because I'm was i just too. up here. I thought Fletcher was going to come on to it. 
But actually, what you see is the desire of the person who I would say has been our best player so far this season. Who's yeah. he's, A lot of the time, a play, they'll let a new player score a goal. So they would, you know, Lee would have gone, oh, go on, Steve, you have it. But it's no chance. Lee's on to this like a flash. Yeah. And that's brave because if you look, the Grimsby defender slides in on him as well. Um, but he just finishes it. Good work by Dolby. It's nice, simple. I think he's trying to find Young there, isn't he? He might have been. That's a good ball by Dolbs, though. It's but it's in a good area. Sense. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Good ball. It's brave by Lee um, yeah. to finish it off. And, uh, yeah, I th- another really good goal. Um, and I thought the football that we played following that goal, it was, you know, after the second goal pop, uh, no, sorry, about the last 20 minutes, like champagne football when Fletcher came on, yeah. as we call it. We were playing back heels, you know, keeping possession. Yes. We were olaying, as we call it. You know, we were taking the mickey. Um, and I thought that was some of the best football that we've uh, that we've seen um, this season. What would you say? Anybody uh, Anybody think? Yeah, I, 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 that was the, um, I'd say, overwhelming consensus on... on... Wrecked some social media after the match was over with. They were talking about that last 15, 20 minutes. Like you said, Matt, they were, um, you know, I don't want to say toying with Grimm's. I mean, just having fun playing, yeah. playing, playing free football. Like you said, back heel, heel clips and, and yeah. um, that, that partnership between, uh, between Fletcher and Lee uh, blossomed a little bit more over the last, um, you know, quarter of the match or so. Yeah. My only, the only thing that sort of the thing that would have put the cherry on the cake was the overhead kick by Fletcher. If that would have gone in, I think yeah. uh, I, I guess you could yeah. say a mulling a mulling goal might have uh, might have been the cherry sure. on the cake. And he did have a couple of chances. Just uh, you know, it just wasn't quite sharp to get to things quick enough. Um, uh, but that'll come. I'm sure he's going to score on Saturday. I'm adamant he is. Um, but uh, yeah. The, the the overhead kick was uh, um, was I don't know what they said about that. Um, do you get still get Mark Griffiths's commentary on the I follow uh, mm-hmm. on the I follow? I don't know what Mark Griffiths said about it, but um, it was it, honestly it was close. The overhead kick was, um, and his header before was really close. So um, I would say that is as good a ninety minutes as we've seen in a while. What do we th- what what we uh, would you uh, what would you say? Yeah, I um I remember thinking when the game finished, I was I thought to myself like this is the racing we're used to, but then I, I I had a second thought. I'm like, well, I don't think we're really used to this Wrexham because it was just so much flashier than we're used to. Yeah, Wrexham of last year was hard nose, straight to goal, nothing direct. flashy. It was direct, direct. and efficient. Yeah, yeah, this team is not only efficient, but it's fun to watch with with what Fletcher brings. So um, that was that ninety minutes was. Like, okay, we're ready for League One, I think. So um, I know I'm jumping way ahead of myself. I'm jumping way ahead of myself. But, (laughs) man, I don't see – I haven't seen a club look like that from Wimbledon to MK Dons. We – it was just really impressive. Yeah. Was that the best football you've seen, Mike, so far? Uh, This season, yes. And, and again, you know, Grimsby, they they – really didn't offer much um nope. at least offensively you know howard was howard was not tested very much um obviously throughout the match they they struggled they struggled in possession just kind of weird very odd play they pass the ball they pass the ball around at the back for you know a good 20 25 seconds 8 10 12 yard passes between their center backs and midfield um couldn't get the ball for it very much. I thought it was a little odd. It was, it was weirdly um, a little bit like Doncaster, um, like what Doncaster did uh, the week before. Um, but again, yeah, th- this season, I mean, I, I, the most, um, you know, complete, complete 90 minutes that, that I think we've seen. Yeah. If we just look at some, some stats, cause some people do like statistics, others don't. Um, I get that. Um, I, uh, I, th- I think they tell you part of the story for sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> If I can uh, just, uh, can you see that? Can you see that at a decent yeah. size? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there's uh, there's some key ele- key elements when you look at the stats. So <clears throat> XG is the one that's quite controversial. Not everybody quite understands it. So XG tells you how good are the chances that you are making. 
So it's not going to tell you how many goals you're going to score, but it's going to tell you when you make a chance, do you make a good, sort of clear cut chance, or are you taking pot shots from miles away? Uh, so if you look at the difference there, you know, that's night and day. They were, they were, they never created anything uh, of sort of note compared to to us. Uh, but yeah. interesting, look at the ball. They had all the ball. They had 60% of the ball. But they had it in areas that didn't hurt us. So that's going to what you were saying, Mike. Uh, you know, they had it at the back yeah. and they were passing it round, but they then couldn't do anything with it, um, is what you would sort of, uh, you would say uh, around that. Although they had nine shots, but, you know, nothing that nothing that troubled us, did it? Um to, to sort of us, uh, and they were pretty accurate, which, to be fair, you know, but they were, they they had an old striker that we used to have, Recky Pike, he was no, he, he's got a bit of pace about him, but he was no threat, um, they really marshalled him well, um, and he had everything sort of, uh, you know, they had everything sort of tied up, uh, player weight ratings wise, again, always controversial, but Elliot Lee got man of the match, I thought McLean and Barnett had really good games. They could have, yeah. you could have argued that they would have been close. Um, but I thought Elliot Lee would get it because I think he had one assist yeah. and a goal and he had a good all round performance, you know. So I, I think it would be hard to take that away from Elliot Lee. Uh, Boyle was up there again, if you look. Um, you know, uh, Fotmob have given him a really high rating. Um, but yeah, the only person I kind of agree with this, not necessarily the rating, the quietest player was Tom O'Connor. Um, and maybe maybe that's a good thing because he's just picking the ball up and giving it simple and breaking up play. Um, but he was the he was the least flashy on the day. Uh, <laughs> is what but I, is... when you when you when you go back to you know, what again the a lot of fans were saying um, in the Doncaster match with, with TOC, he, he, you know, seemed to be a little bit off. So it was good to yeah, see him yeah. come back. Didn't seem to make any, um, you know, didn't, didn't sit a foot wrong on the day. Yeah. In my opinion last week. Yeah. He's uh, and he'll get stronger as he gets some game time in him. Yeah. He'll get, uh, he'll get stronger. Um, There's also those players as cliche as it sounds where when they're doing their job, you don't hear anything from them. And yep. I think that's Tom O'Connor situation. Yeah. It's, it seems to always be those defensive that's midfielders, right. actually, a lot of the time. Yep. They just sweep up, uh, give the ball to other people to do the to do the flashy stuff. Um, and uh, to be fair, he nearly had an assist because he puts a great ball through for Mullin in the first half that Mullin drags with his left foot wide. Again, that's just sharpness. That'll come with his, yeah. with his fitness. Um, but I just thought um, the the... One player again, he, so he, Elliot Lee got man of the match. I just thought it was worth looking at this, his season so far, because it's frightening, yeah. right? Again, if you don't love stats, it's not a big thing for people. I get that, but, uh, you know, it does help you build a story uh, of what it's done. So this season, he's played eight games. He scored seven goals, got two assists. Um, and, it, uh, you know, Fop Mob gave him an average rating of 8.2. Uh, you know that is, yeah. and this guy was a free agent <laughs> member. We didn't pay a penny for him of a fashion. Pretty good, you know. Yeah. Um, so this guy is having the time of his life. Isn't he? He's yeah. in his prime. He's twenty eight. Um, yeah. So the caveat here is uh, one more yellow card, and he's going to be sitting a game out, right? So he's got four yellow cards, and at five yellow cards, he's going to sit a game out. So what I'm hoping Phil Parkinson will be doing now. Is is uh, obviously this Saturday he'll say to him, "Listen, don't give a yellow card away," um, but he'll be trying to plan a game where he'll be happy for Lee to take a yellow card and let Jordan Davis or whoever else he wants to do and let them come in. They'll be hopefully they'll be planning that 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 rest week for him against a weaker team if we can. Um, we have so, Tramier uh, coming up. Say, say that again. We have Tramier coming up after Doncaster. Uh, we played that one. Oh, I'm sorry, my. I'm you're, sorry. Yeah, you're looking at old yeah, fixtures. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about yeah. That. no, but That's there'll be somebody. Your it. your point is though that you you can pinpoint a game, and he might take a deliberate yellow card. It, the the obvious one will be a pullback. So there'll be a game late on if he hasn't had it that they want him to miss it. He'll just pull somebody's shirt and get a yellow card, um, and just take the yellow. Uh, and then they'll let Davis get some minutes. Probably want to give him a week or two to get some more fitness time uh, in. Um, but you know that is sensational uh, from Elliot Lee, uh, and he really has stepped up 
uh, while Mullins been out and carried the show. Uh, and I, you know, I th- I think we said last week, Michael, that um, he's so far for us. He'd oh, definitely for me. I think I'm sure you said the same that he'd been my player of the season uh, yeah. so far. Uh, some other people think Ollie Palmer is. Um, I don't know what what were your thoughts, Jamal, but for me, it's been Lee so far. Yeah, it's 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 definitely been Lee. I think I think the the thing with Palmer is that he regressed a little bit at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. He's gone back to his old self. So I think yeah. people want to give him that, you know, man of the match. But to me, it's like, well, no, he's just going back to what we're used to seeing. He's not doing anything extraordinary where Lee is going extraordinary, like, you know, just a whole different level. And like you said, he's, he looks like a level one player amongst level twos or uh, league twos. I'm sorry. Yeah. So um, no, he's definitely, he's definitely been man of the match. Uh, Him and and another unsung hero, I think has been Ryan Barnett. Yeah. I love what he's been doing this season on the other side of, of that wing. I love that. I don't know if y'all watch much boxing, but I love how he wears those black cleats. He just reminds me of the early '90s Tyson, Tyson. when he would just <laughs> come out with the black shorts and, and shoes. Totally blacked out boots, uh, yeah. no logos that you can see and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, did you you did say he was your player of the season so far, didn't you? Mike? I I'm not making that. Lee, I haven't made that Lee up. For sure, I? yeah. Oh, well, Starkey, I'm sure. Oh, I think he's frozen. Oh, 100. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't 100%. remember whether you did say Elliot, him or whether you did Elliot say Lee's somebody else. The season so far, so, so far he's so far. Uh, he's Absolutely. been he's been the drive. Should we call him? He's been the driving force for us so far. Um, yeah. You know, he's really made the difference in games, hasn't he? Um, I think last week we actually said uh, we'd seen a stat which said he'd won us six points. His goals had so far. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know. What do y'all uh, just? Curiosity, what do y'all attribute this whole new level that he's playing at? Is it familiarity with the system? Is it some of the new additions we brought in? I think it's a combination. It'll be, it will be a, it won't just be one thing. It'll be a combination. So he's obviously very comfortable at the club. Uh, Phil Parkinson has obviously got a lot of faith and confidence in him, whereas he hasn't always had that from other managers, I think is what he said. Um, and then you've got, he's just obviously Mullins been out, so he's just, because he's felt so comfortable, yep. he's he's just he's taking it upon himself just to just to try and drive us through those games. I don't, would you say anything else, Mike? I don't know. I, I for the last couple of matches specifically for me, it's um, the his partnership in midfield with Luke. The fact yeah. that Luke's come yes. back in and able to been an anchor in midfield and Let's freed up go. Lee to exactly Lee has um, been able to a little deeper in attack um, than he would if, you know, if it was maybe Jones and Cannon. Um, so for, for me, uh, just another small yeah. little nuance is, is, is Luke is, um, is Youngie anchoring the midfield. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that's good, good stuff. Anything else to add on that before we uh, look ahead to the big one? Any other that's thoughts? Who is, did we all think Lee was man of the match or did we think anybody else was man of that game or? I Definitely. thought it was Elliot. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought, but I'd say McLean was good. Barnett was good. Yeah, there was lots of other. You know, but you could have Boyle was obviously had a high rating. Lots of people, you know, um, that we could uh, that we could look at. But I think it just you get a goal and an assist and play well. It's hard to argue that you're not then the man of the match, and it you know when you've yeah. uh, when you've done that as well. Okay, good stuff. Did we enjoy? Did we enjoy our technical uh, <laughs> nearly 1080p <laughs> video review? Yeah, are we keeping that section, Michael? Or what are we doing? Yeah, you are, Matt. That's a winner for me, brother. You are fancy. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so we will have another little break, and then when we come back, quick Stockport preview. Are we happy with that? Let's do it. Feels good. <laughs> 